Okay, so the intermediate tutorial revisited. So in the intermediate, we then sort of said, okay, continue with these simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically. And basically in a nutshell, as a beginner, you're just getting used to how the pieces maneuver. And then from there, just exacting simple maneuvers to take pieces off the board, utilizing the, the movements of the pieces, just to get used to that. So there was no further strategy other than getting them to an appropriate position to basically remove pieces from the board strategically, safely. In the intermediate level, we're then looking at, okay, maybe we might not want to take that piece, but position ourselves in a better position in order to improve our position on the board and gain maybe some advantages in the game. So then we started doing a little bit of a maybe two step calculation in terms of, okay, um, if we go here, what actually happens? Um, just calculating maybe one or two steps ahead just to make sure that we're gonna be okay. If we go here, this bishop gets taken obviously. So let's just take the bishop off the board, keeping it simple. So we don't want to jump too far ahead with the calculation in the intermediate level. Could push this pawn here, can't go there just yet because the queen is attacking bishop's got this angle but the queen is there could attack this pawn feels quite nice queen's not on a white square i think we'll probably go with this and it's probably not the best but it's attacking a piece going towards the king area we're feeling comfortable do we want to bring the rook into the center of the board on this occasion yes because we can simply bring it back down again so we're not over rigging the calculation. It's like a one step, two step calculation in the intermediate level, not going too far with anything. Just making sure you're going to be half decently sound in terms of where you're going to go. The opponent wants to potentially come here and can also come here as well. So we can't really stop that action. So I'm actually going to attack their knight, keeping it simple, but we did do a two step calculation up to a point. Uh, I thought it was going to come here. Okay, that's fine. So really kind of thinking of getting this rook out of here but we need to sort this pawn maybe to try and get some sort of doubling action on this pawn here so it's only a two-step calculation the queen's attacking this pawn here we can defend and attack his knight but the queen's not going to be taking the knight anyway we could attack the knight see where he wants to go but then we're sending it here so we don't want that do we so I'm going to just bring the pawn here, keep it simple. Not going to go any further with the calculation than that. One step, two step calculation um, should see us right. So he's got to check on our king. We can just move the king out of the way. Don't want to over it. Oh, he's landed on the rook. Oh, bless him. Okay, so that's a nice one. So one step, two step calculation. The opponent's weaving their way in, looking to actually get our rook here. But blindsided on the fact that the rook is still here, so it can be actually taken. These things happen. And as we've mentioned in the description of the video, it's probably a good idea to actually have a look and observe um, players of from 1200 to say the 1500 or even to the 1600. Um, same with the beginner level, you know, from zero to um, 1300 or zero to 1200. Just observe those games to have a look at the way that they do behave in the games and then look at these videos that I'm doing here. And, and then you, you can work out in your own ways. Do they actually play like that? Um, are they um, displaying these types of behaviors and these types of traits? if you are in that rating range then again i think this type of stuff will help your own understanding of how you play and how maybe you don't want to play and but having a look at how other people in your rating area range actually are playing as well so then it does help to solidify in your brain that if this is how they're playing I want to try and knock it on the head. I want to try and improve it a little bit at a time. You know, if you are a fast learner, then fine. You know, you're a fast streamer, off you go. And we're talking about the normal everyday person who wants a different way of learning how to play chess, a different psychology, um, 
maybe they don't want to learn all these fancy words, you know, the fancy openings and this, that and the other, because that's sort of confusing the whole aspect of, well, I just want to play the game of chess. So then you've come to, I think, an, a nice place where you can actually have a look, check out what, what I'm kind of saying in terms of the psychology of how to maneuver around the board um, with the simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board strategically. But at the same time, it's not relying on my word as um, any kind of God speaking type factual thing. It's really about you going out there and having a look at other players uh, of this rating range area and just checking out how they do play and then spotting these things yourselves because I might not have spotted the best moves in this game at all as we know the gauge bar usually isn't on our side but we care not we can learn from that but at the end of the day it's not in this game it wasn't in this game as we were playing so I've got to be able to make my own choices based on the mantra that we're using which is simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board in the interim bit we're doing like a two step a one step two step calculation in order to make a, an appropriate choice of movement so that's where we're at with the interim we don't need to do um, a lot of these and um, because we have the original interim lessons uh, it's like a three hour session type thing so if you wanted to have a look at those then I'll put the link in the description below um, but yeah this is like a mini series um, just revisiting the interim um, level of chess and how we can hopefully try and improve each stage and um, going through the games it will be ugly purists please do not come on thinking oh you're following a caracan or why didn't you do this that and the other please do check out other players who play in this rating range and if you're wanting to improve yourself then yes take those points on board that you may have spotted in the games i'm displaying here but we still need to keep looking and observing just to make sure things haven't changed within those levels yeah the generalization is a generalization um, it stands us in good stead as we're developing going forward in our chess so we have to keep checking in every now and then just to see whether or not the standard has improved or it is still the same type of um, behaviors that are displayed so from 2020 um, the interim interim session is down in the link below um, check out the same kind of principles that we talked about here and um, it goes into more in depth but there's a lot more games on there to um, actually learn from and pick up on and really just address any weak areas that you may potentially have but it is a simple concept it really is down to earth so it is quite practical to actually use as well as displayed in this particular game here it's the interim session oh we've been practicing taking here oops what's happened here getting trapped develop the night so with the interim level we as we know we keep oh here we go but the queen cannot come and defend so I think this might be one of those special games <laughs> let's attack the queen so with the interim level it's about still using the simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically but with the additional add-on now because you're used to the way that the pieces are moving from the um, beginner stage now it's about looking maybe one or two steps calculation wise in terms of what potentially you might do in order to where uh, it maybe improve your position on the board i'm gonna bring the bishop out here just keeping it simple it's just making space for the queen well that pawn was gone anyway so we're not going to worry about that and now i'm just going to bring the rook here so i'm looking to do a virtual castle i'm actually taking here so they're going to feel quite good but let's just bring the king back so that was the mini calculation in the sense that well they're looking a little bit hefty so 
The bishops in front of their queen, the rook is extra in through to the queen, was looking to go here, but the queen can take the knight. Okay, so. Could bring the knight across, just so that we've got the x-ray. Can the bishop take anything? I think I'm gonna bring the knight across just to have that pin through to the queen for now. Simple as simple. So we can take, then the pawn takes, and then the pawn's looking to jump down here. Knight does have space to jump. Okay, let's just continue with that. If the pawn takes, the bishop can come here, but it's made space for his queen. So that's a nice touch. But we can simply just move the queen out of the way, king out of the way, sorry. So he's actually taken with the bishop. So he's rushing, gonna grab, keep it simple. Okay. So positionally at the moment, we're not doing too bad. We are a minor piece up out of that exchange. So I'm actually going to bring the knight out to attack the queen. We're still on his rook, keeping it simple. A smaller piece attacking the higher piece can't be wrong, but he does have a check on our king with his rook taken. Our queen can still defend the bishop here. So that one step, two step calculation seemed to be okay for us at this moment. So now we're attacking this pawn twice. I think he's gonna, probably gonna have to give up the queen because we do have an X-ray through to their king. So our knight can take and then we're on. Oh, okay, it's not doing it that way. So his queen is probably going to take, but then our knight can take. There we go, let's see. So we're on their pawn, he's on our bishop. So we could save the bishop and save the pawn. So I think if we just bring the bishop here protecting the pawn looking at the blind spot uh, they're moving dead quick now so we could put a check on their king just to be a bit of a nuisance but where do we go from there just doing it to do a move we're going to attack the knight simple is a simple does but let's attack it anyway got to be careful our king could get back ranked back ranked by their but the bishop is protecting here, so if he does do that, so we'll actually take the rook off with a checkmate with the diagonal of the bishop, cutting off the king. So that was quite frantic, but very simplified, removing pieces from the ball strategically, and and again, basically using the one step, two step calculation. We didn't go too deep into any calculations whatsoever, and it seemed to serve us right in terms of move orders, um, especially in the mid part of the game. Uh, so we ended up being a minor piece up. Okay, so intermediate chess. Basically looking at one twos. Calculation, let's just bring the bishop here. look to touch onto the center or castle king safety so they're actually looking to block the center down but i think we can hit the head of the snake quite nicely i don't see any major issues here so got to keep it simple straightforward no arty business let's see if we can get this center opened up As usual just capture so the opponent's moved a little bit swift there so we've got a nice pin through onto the king i think that should be okay because now we've got two pieces on that knight so in essence uh, we should be able to have uh, brought the queen down so supporting but the queen doesn't really want to be doing support work probably put an x-ray through onto their queen with the bishop so that looks like a good move it's also giving the king some company as well yeah bring the bishop through well, they've got a fork but we can just, just take this knight off the board don't think we need to be too fancy here
bishop can't take because we've got a pin through onto their king and we're going to have the same thing in terms of being able to grab the rook so we should be able to peel off a few bits of material oh, I don't know if the king should have gone there okay we'll capture him looks like they're going to lose the rook as well their bishop's going to take our rook we can go for his rook capture the pawn take his rook so materials getting depleted big style let's just capture here I don't think we need to think too much about that. We can just capture the rook. Then we can take either one of these pawns or take the bishop off. But I think the bishop's going to move. Oh, it does move. So we can capture the knight and then we're on the bishop. So they've lost a lot of material in a short space of time. So that's uh, quite interesting. A good focus targeting and no more i can't say any more than that so putting a check on the king we can obviously take the queen off the board at this stage if need be or come and put a check on and get the bishop off the board yeah so that's way too much um could take that we all i was just about to take the bishop
Thank you.